This broken PS5 has been to two repair shops. One of them made it worse, the other one couldn't fix it. So today we're gonna take it apart and see if we can fix it. This video is sponsored by iFixit. So basically a customer brought this to a repair shop. The repair shop had an employee who went ahead and tried to replace the HDMI port, but unfortunately the employee was not quite ready for that difficult of a job. The shop then gave the PS5 to another shop. Somehow the PS5 ended up with a hole in the motherboard. Now one of the things that you guys often have questions about in these sorts of cases is what happened to the customer, uh, were they taken care of, and in this case what we decided to do, the repair, the original repair shop and I decided that I would purchase the PS5 from them and then they would use that money and they would add additional money so they can make sure the customer got a replacement PS5. That way I get this PS5 to make a video about and the customer is taken care of by getting a working PS5. Okay, and now we have all those screws off this plate, let's get our first look at the board. So here are all the little thermal pads on the metal plate. That looks pretty good so far. And I can already tell there's been a lot of work on the HDMI system, which I already knew. So far, the rest of the board looks okay. So let's get it out and check out the top and see how bad this HDMI area it really is. As far as I can tell, that's some liquid metal residue. That's not great news. I'm gonna clean that off right away just because we need to make sure there's no liquid metal where it's not supposed to be. Thermal paste in the vast majority of cases is not conductive, but liquid metal is very conductive. Better. And now let's see what we're getting ourselves into. Oh wow, this is a total mess. This is a mix of liquid metal and thermal paste. Liquid metal and thermal paste do not mix. At least they're not supposed to be mixed. Clearly you can sort of do it. So the first thing we have to do is clean all of this off. Also, we need to remove this sponge as it's completely soaked with thermal paste and liquid metal. And then we also have to make sure that none of the liquid metal got on the APU itself, which is under this sponge. And that's before we even get to the main repair. Let's take a look at the HDMI system. So the port itself obviously needs to be resoldered. All of these pins need to be resoldered. There looks to be an actual hole in the motherboard right over here. Got a bunch of solder spilled onto the ground plane, which isn't really a big deal. And then we've got what looks to be liquid metal and or thermal paste spilled along the HDMI chip right here. So we need to clean all that off. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this entire motherboard cleaned, then we'll get to the repair. I'm gonna start with the easiest part first, which is the heat sink. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just get as much of this off as I can first. Then we'll come in with some Q-tips. Oh, wow. So a bunch of the liquid metal is actually up under here. So we need to remove this bottom plate so we can get all of that off too. It's like all hiding out under there. So all of this right here, we need to remove because that'll end up all over this board if, it's, if we just leave it there. To remove this easily, I'm gonna be using a syringe. That liquid metal came in. Just suck up as much of this as I can. That just makes it easier to clean. This stuff kind of moves all over, so it's pretty tricky to clean up. Okay, now we can go in with a Q-tip at least hopefully. Kind of spin it as we go and that'll soak up a bunch of that liquid metal. Just like that. Okay, now that is all clean. There's zero liquid metal there. Now we can clean this up and put that plate back on. Okay, now all this whole area is rebuilt and fresh and ready to go once we get this motherboard fixed. And now let's take a closer look at this APU. I'm gonna clean as much of it up as I can before we remove this sponge once we remove that, that will let a whole bunch more of this stuff get on the APU if it's still there. So we want to clean it up as good as we can before we do that. Okay, I think it's time to remove this sponge and see how the APU looks. Obviously this PS5 has been <laughs> very abused. 
Ah, good news. There is nothing underneath this black barrier right here. So that is great news. So I'm basically gonna throw this sponge away. There's no way we're gonna be able to clean that off and we're just gonna replace it with a, another sponge from a different PS5. First, let's just finish getting this APU totally clean. And now the APU is totally clean and ready to install the sponge in liquid metal. But I'm actually not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna get the rest of it fixed up. I'm gonna do the repair on the HDMI system just so then we don't have to worry about, you know, spilling the liquid metal or it getting on my skin or sleeves or anything like that. And then the other thing I have to do is clean up any traces of liquid metal on this board. There's a bunch of small areas where it looks like liquid metal's kind of been smeared in places. So I'm gonna clean this board. I'm gonna do that part off camera cause that's kind of a boring part, but I am gonna clean it. And then once that's done, I'll get to this HDMI repair or I should say repair attempt. So here is the HDMI chip. And overall, it actually doesn't look too bad. I think most of this stuff on it is just the thermal paste. I don't see any liquid metal on it. Let's try a Q-tip with some IPA and just see what it does. Yep. So a good cleaning is going to clean this all up. So as long as this HDMI IC was not damaged when they tried to repair the HDMI port, I think it's gonna work just fine. The HDMI port, however, has some problems. <laughs> so you can see this is the hole in the board. I'm not sure if that is actually a hole in the board or not though. We're also missing a pad over here. It looks like some pads over here. So the first thing we need to do is remove this port and then we can really see what we have going on here. Now, in order to remove this port, I'm gonna use a hot air soldering station to basically just heat the entire thing up until it falls out. So even with the port removed, I still can't really tell what's going on right here. So I'm gonna use some solder wick to wick up a bunch of this excess solder because we really need to see where these little traces are going and if they're even there or whether that's just solder sitting on top. This broken trace over here is actually fine because this right here is a ground pad and it goes to the ground plane over here. I'm not sure about this one or this one. So I'm gonna clean this whole area up and then we can hopefully see what exactly is going on over here. And I can confirm that there is definitely what looks like a significant hole in the board right here. So this is an HDMI port on a PS5 that is obviously intact. I'm looking at this because I need to make sure that the pins on the new port that I install are installed correctly. So we're missing one pin right here and this pin would be connected right here. This one goes right there, that one's ground. So we have the new port installed, all of these little pins are lined up. So now we just have to go through and solder them all on. Then we need to create a new trace from this pin to there and then from this pin to here. So I'm gonna solder on all the pins first, then we'll get to fixing the faulty traces or rebuilding the traces that aren't there anymore. Okay, and I think we're all fixed up. I put quite a loop in this because I don't want this sitting down against the board because there is other points on here that this wire could touch. It is enameled wire, but obviously when I heat it, that enamel melts off. So I put a loop in it to avoid it touching any of the rest of the board. Same with this one. They seem to be attached nice and solidly. All the rest of the pins are attached correctly as well. So now we can get this set back in the board, but first we have to install the perfect amount of liquid metal. So I've stolen a sponge off of a, another donor board and installed it onto this one so it's all ready for the liquid metal. Before that though, I wanna tell you a little bit about iFixit. As you've probably noticed, most of my tools that I've used in this video are iFixit tools. So everything from this driver with the Torx T8 bit to remove the screws on this PS5, to things like these tweezers. Also, these Hako tools you can actually get right on iFixit websites as well. One of my favorite toolkits is the iFixit Protect toolkit. This is just the driver set that comes out of the Protect toolkit. I keep this separate because I use it the most. That's one of the great things about this kit though, is this entire driver kit right here has a magnet on it and it is magnetized to the inside of the case of the Protect toolkit. This is the rest of the kit right here. 
And right on the back is a large magnet. And this fits right there, just like that. And it stays on nice and solid. And then it has magnets that go on the lid. So the lid just stays on there magnetized as well. The ProTec Toolkit also comes with all of these other tools, including pry tools and spudgers and a suction cup to remove screens and stuff like that. I don't use those quite as often, so I just remove this, set all the rest of the kit aside for when I'm not using it, and then I have my driver and bit set just right there handy when I need it. You can go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix to get any of the tools you've seen here, along with any of the soldering tools that you'll need for your repairs as well. Now let's get the perfect amount of liquid metal applied and then we can install this board into the rest of the console and see if it works. I'm going to be using Conductonaut liquid metal for this application. I'm going to spread a good amount on here and then we'll spread it around with the swabs they include. So we just want to rub it into the top of the APU. Just like that. Now these PS5s, they take quite a bit of this stuff. So we want to make sure and put plenty of it on here. And now with that part done, we can work on the heatsink side. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit on this because we have enough on the APU that it will spread around just fine. But spreading a little bit on here will make sure that the two surfaces mate well and they come in contact with each other and transfer heat really well. And there we have the perfect amount of liquid metal. Now let's get this thing back together so we can test it and see if it's gonna work. So it is all back together. It's all plugged in. Let's see if it's gonna show anything on the screen. Okay, we got a fan. We got a blue light. Will it go to white? Okay, white light. Let's see if it shows anything on the screen. Oh, here we go, come on. Yeah, there we go. So this PS5 is now fixed. It was definitely a difficult repair, but easily worth it because now this PS5 can go out in the world and live a nice full life. If you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I tried to fix another PS5 that was ran over by an angry girlfriend. I'll put that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix that one. Thank you again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. Go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix to get any tools, repair guides, or parts that you need for your devices. Thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.